God speaks to Abram. Now this is as important as just about anything in the Bible. Because God is going to speak seven occasions at least that we have recorded. He's going to speak to Abraham. And he's giving Abraham a promise and a calling that has to do with you and me. And there's two parts of it. Abraham, I am going to make out of you a great nation. So we'll put that up here as GN, because that's the first half of the promise. You're going to make of you a great nation. And then secondly, and through your seed, through your DNA, through your sperm content, getting a little physical here, but that's what you say, out of your loins, I'm going to bring blessing to all the people groups of the earth. Well, it doesn't take a whole lot of reason to understand what is needed for the blessing. Because we've had maybe thousands of years of understanding. At the most conservative, this prologue is 2,000 years old. That's if you believe Mr. Usher's datings. Uh, I think, what does he have at 1.15 in the afternoon? of 2004, but he had it down pretty detailed and we've since uh, raised our eyebrows about that. But in this period of time, uh, what we've seen is that God's great creation is marred by the sinfulness, the wickedness of human beings. And God says to Abraham, I'm going to make of you a great nation. And through your seed, apparently through that nation, through people of that nation, I'm going to bring blessing to all the people groups of the earth. Now he repeats this promise over and over again to Abraham. And he gives more and more detail. I, at this time, I'm not going into this in detail. Someday we'll come back. This course has two parts. What God is doing, that's what we're looking at now. And then there's a second part. Of, the last third of the course is what God is saying. And then, for example, we take a look at the promise and the details of the promise. Seven times in Genesis. The Lord reiterates the promise, giving more and more detail each time. Then the promise is reiterated another seven times to Isaac and Jacob. And then the promise is referred to at least 30 more times in Genesis 12 to 50. For example, Joseph says, I want my bones taken up to the land. He remembers the promise. And so, let's see, if my, my arithmetic is right, there are 44 references to the promise uh, in Genesis 12 to 15. It is the, if you're an English teacher, it's the central literary theme. It is also the gospel. When was the gospel first proclaimed? You could make a case for that day after the resurrection of Christ, when they're out there at Pentecost, and Peter gets up and proclaims the gospel. But that's a little bit late, because 2,000 years earlier, the gospel had been proclaimed. You say, are you pulling out the gospel? Yeah, it's the gospel. That's what the blessing is. Now, they didn't realize all that then. 
when we go back and look, if we ever get around to looking what God is saying, we'll go back and look at that more carefully. And then we'll go to Acts and to Galatians, and we'll see that this was the first preaching of the good news of God's redemptive work. Wow. So, we move to Abraham. God says, Abraham, I'm going to make of you a great nation. And through your seed, through your DNA, out of your loins, I'm going to bring you. Okay. We'll get to work, Lord. All right. We're going to make of you a great nation. Listen, what do you need to have a great nation? What's the first basic thing you have to have to have a great nation? People. Right. And then land, laws, maybe government, and then we'll welcome back to that. But you certainly, you can't have a great nation. We are not a great nation here. Do you understand that? We're just a little family. You know, we're just four of us. We are not a great nation. Abraham, I'm going to make of you a great nation out of your loins through his DNA. There's no adoption. Here's And so Abraham, married to this nice lady, turns out that he is unable to have children. Now that's a bummer. He's, he's unable to have kids. And he's looking into all kinds of other schemes and other ways to get children because he's, his, he's firing blanks. He is not managing. Now, this is ridiculous, isn't it? Abraham is going to make us do a great nation from your loins. And he can't have children. Or maybe it's not him. In fact, it was the lady. Oh, dear. And so the answer to that, since it was, what's her name again? Sarah. 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 It, he could keep her as kind of a companion and friend, but he's going to go get another lady that, he, you know, where his, his, his sperm will work and he can have babies because this is so important. He can't become a great nation unless he has children. And so he does this, and the Lord says no to all these other kids. And Abraham is getting old. Beyond the time when his sperm worked. And Sarah is way past the time of, what do we call that? The things that what? Yeah, she's, there's, there's a stronger word than that, but she's, she's past the childbearing age. She's not, she's not producing any eggs anymore. And Abraham's got kids, but God keeps saying, oh no, they're not the children of the promise. They're not the children of the promise. Oh uh -uh, no. One day they're out in the tent, and they're, they're, uh, they have visitors coming. They're relatively wealthy. And they have some visitors coming. And so they have some uh, uh, some lamb. No, no, no. They had uh, baby calf. What is that? Uh, veal. Veal. veal and yogurt and 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 uh, Sarah fixing a nice meal. And he's sitting around with these who are representatives of the Lord, or maybe some Old Testament appearance of Jesus. It's they. I'm not sure. But they're sitting around there.